The Lee Cup. The Milk Cup. The Coca-Cola Cup. The Worthington Cup. The Carlin Cup. The Carabao Cup. Whatever you choose to call it, it's fair to say that Ipswich don't have the best history in this competition. It's pretty well known that this is the only major honour that that lot up the road have won, and we haven't. But with Town one game away from reaching the quarterfinals, I've taken a look back at our best ever runs in this competition. In my first two seasons following town, we actually made the quarterfinals in back-to-back years. In those days, the early rounds were played over two legs, and in the 1996-97 season, we beat an AFC Bournemouth side featuring Matt Holland 5-1 on aggregate in the first round. Next up was Fulham, and Simon Milton scored on the return to his place of birth in a 1-1 draw in the away leg at Craven Cottage. Fulham, like Bournemouth, were a second division side at the time, and we took care of business in the home leg. Alex Matthews scored twice as we won 4-2 to book our place in the third round where we'd faced Crystal Palace. This was a one-legged affair at Portman Road and it was also pretty one-sided. Alex Matthews and Paul Mason both scored two each as we won 4-1. Second Division Gillingham were up next and Richard Naylor scored his first ever ITFC goal as we booked our place in the course of finals. And over 20,000 fans packed into Portman Road to see us host Premier League Leicester City in January 97. But the night was to end in heartbreak, with former Norwich forward Mark Robbins scoring the winner for the Foxes. The following season, we enjoyed more sweet success in the Sugary Beverage Cup. It started with victory over two legs against Charlton, which included a rare use of the six-second rule at the Valley. Mark Venus thumped home his first ever Ipswich goal with an indirect free kick and a 1-0 win before we eased past the Addicts in the second leg. Matt Holland was an Ipswich Town player by now, and he scored twice to help us avoid an upset against Minnow's Torquay in the second round. Interviewed after that game, Matt Holland said that he'd like to play Manchester United next, and he got that wish as Alex Ferguson's Premier League champions came to Portman Road. In one of the best atmospheres I've ever experienced, we produced a scintillating first-half performance. Alex Maffey opened the scoring before Mauricio Tarico popped up with an incredible effort from distance. 2-0 was how that one finished, and next up was Oxford United away at the Manor Ground. Decked in our rarely seen third kit, the on-loan Jason Dazelle put us ahead in the second half, but extra time was needed where Tony Mowbray headed us into the course of finals. There we met Chelsea at home, player managed by the legendary Rude Hullet. But it looked like we were potentially going out with a whimper when Tori Andre Flo and Graham Masso gave Chelsea a 2-0 lead. Tariko gave us hope on half-time before Matthew lifted the roof off Portman Road with a classy finish in front of the North Stand. Bobby Petter came close to winning it for us in extra time, but his shot rebounded back off the post and we were destined for penalties where we lost 4-1 and I went home in tears. In the 1984-85 season, we did go one better in the Milk Cup. We knocked out Newcastle, Oxford and QPR en route to the semi-finals. Unfortunately, not much is known about who we played and what happened in that semi-final, but ultimately, we didn't progress. The 2000-2001 season is one fondly remembered by Ipswich fans as we took the top flight by storm, finishing fifth and qualifying for the UEFA Cup. It's often forgotten though that we also enjoyed a decent run in the Worthington Cup that year. First up was Arsenal away at Highbury, and that was no problem for George Burley's Tractor Boys. A late winner from James Scowcroft in front of the away fans in the clock end sent us through to the fourth round. There we faced another Premiership club in Coventry City, and David Johnson scored his final ever goal for town in a 2-1 win. What followed was not one, but two trips to Main Road as we faced Manchester City. After the original game was abandoned due to torrential rain, we eventually overcame Alfie Harlan, Sean Gotra and the like in extra time, with Mark Venus scoring a memorable goal to send us to the semi-finals. There we faced Birmingham City, and in the first leg we won 1-0 at Portman Road, with Marcus Stewart scoring a penalty. But the second leg, played on a torn-up pitch at a hostile St Andrews, was nothing short of disastrous. Scowcroft looked like he might have had us heading through on away goals, as he made it 2-1 in the away leg, but two more Birmingham goals, including one Richard Wright will never forget, saw Birmingham progress to the final against Liverpool and Cardiff. We were knocked out in the early rounds for much of the next 20 years, but there was one outlier in the 2010-11 season. Town were enjoying a strong start to that campaign under Roy Keane, but still needed extra time to get past Exeter and Crew Alexandra in the early rounds. The reward for a decent 2-1 win at Millwall was our first home tie of the season against Northampton, who we beat 3-1 to reach the quarterfinals. At this time, the mood was pretty low at Portman Road, and only 11,000 fans were in attendance to see us beat Premier League West Brom. Excitement soon built as we were drawn to face Arsenal in the semi-finals, and further when Roy Keane was sacked as manager. 
Fresh from a 7-0 FA Cup drubbing at Chelsea, caretaker boss Ian McParlin seemingly had a master plan for Arsene Wenger's Arsenal. We deservedly took a 1-0 lead going into the second leg at the Emirates, thanks to a fantastic strike from Thomas Priskin. Cesc Fabregas was disgusted and compared us to a rugby team. With 9,000 town fans in the away and a new boss Paul Jewell in the dugout, we held our own for an hour at the Emirates until Nicholas Benter unfortunately morphed into Cristiano Ronaldo for a few moments and the game slipped away from us, Arsenal eventually winning it 3-0. So there we have it, our best ever runs in the League Cup. Hopefully this is the year that we finally make it through to a final. Please hit like and let us know in the comments of any highlights you have from following town in this competition. Thanks for watching.